Mac 10, the gangster's favorite weapon. Do you remember when Ice Cube released Gangsta's Fairy Tale Part 2 in 1992 after he had already parted ways with the famed Los Angeles gangster rap group NWA? The song included the lyrics, had the Mac 10 aimed out the coup. A song had never before made reference to the Military Armament Corporation Model 10, which is more technically known as the Mac 10. Welcome back to the US Marines Force Channel. And let's get right into why the MAC-10 was the gangster's best friend. First off, is the MAC-10 still relevant today? In addition to the AK-47, the Model 10 has been the subject of praise in a number of songs, with artists such as Tupac Shakur, commonly known as Tupac, Little Duke, and Young Thug among those who have done so. It wasn't just something that was sung about. A number of gangster rappers and genuine members of the gang carried the weapon. It had its debut in the movies about 20 years earlier, but John Wayne, a seasoned Western star who was trying to break into modern films at the time, was the one who carried it rather than an OG, original gangsta. Wayne, who had turned down the offer to play Harry Callahan in Dirty Harry, played a no-nonsense investigator in the film Mick Q rather than a lawman who worked on the frontier. After that, famous people including Michael Caine, James Caan, Pam Greer, Kurt Russell, and Bruce Willis were spotted with weapons in their possession. In point of fact, the origins of the Model 10 can be traced all the way back to the 1960s when Gordon B. Ingram created it at Military Armament Corporation as a small, select fire straight blowback operated handgun that was initially chambered for the 45 ACP cartridge. Ingram designed the Model 10 as a straight blowback operated handgun because it was intended to be used in close quarters. It is similar in design to the Uzi that is manufactured in Israel in that it features a telescoping barrel and an open bolt that fires. The M10's extraordinary lightweight allows it to have an extremely high cyclic rate of 1,090 rounds per minute, and the 9x19mm Luger Parabellum version of the weapon can fire up to 1,500 rounds per minute. Both of these numbers are impressively high. On the other hand, the completely automatic mode has a terrible track record for accuracy. Only 50 meters is the effective range when using the 45 ACP cartridge, but 70 meters is the effective range when using the 9mm variant. Up next, what do you need to know about the gun? Just one foot in length and 9.45 inches across when the stock is fully extended, the M10 is significantly shorter and lighter than the Uzi without a suppressor. For the 9mm type, it uses magazines that hold 32 rounds, while for the 45 caliber, it utilizes detachable box magazines that hold 30 rounds. It is said to be one of the submachine guns that produce the least amount of noise when fired with subsonic ammunition. It was typically paired with a famous two-stage suppressor that had been developed to reduce the amount of noise and muzzle flash produced by the weapon. Although it was used by a number of special forces groups during the Vietnam War and again during the invasion of Grenada, the M10 was never formally approved by the United States as a standard issue weapon. However, it was used by a number of police enforcement agencies around the country. Additionally, its products were sent to a number of countries in South America and Asia. One of the few types of firearms that were expressingly covered by the assault weapon ban of 1994 was the civilian pistol variation. This model of the firearm operated differently than the type used by the military and law enforcement, and it did not have a folding stock. A Model 11 or M11 variant that had been modified was made available. This variant did away with the threaded barrel and instead used a custom magazine that could only carry 10 rounds of ammunition. The Model 10 became well known to the hip hop community in the 1980s after appearing in movies and television shows such as The A-Team and Miami Vice. This led to Model 10's rise to prominence in the culture. Ironically, by the time the pistol attained widespread notoriety, the Military Armament Corporation had already discontinued its operations. While the rights had been transferred to RPB Industries of Georgia, which was responsible for manufacturing the civilian version, other companies such as Cobra produced their own variants. So how else did the MAC-10 gain its fame? The M10 was popular not only among criminals, but also among movie directors 
who undoubtedly enjoyed how simple it was to frame the small weapon on the large screen. The M10 was also popular among criminals. It was utilized in high profile shootings, such as the one in Miami in 1979 that resulted in the death of drug lord Jimenez Pineso, and the one in Denver in 1984 that resulted in the death of radio talk show personality Alan Berg by a member of the neo-Nazi group The Order. Both of these shootings took place in 1979. Numerous rap songs continue to make references to the famed weapon, which was ridiculed by would-be gangsters who were ignorant that it was a meager weapon with low range and unreliable accuracy. This led to the ridicule of the weapon by the would-be gangsters. The company that developed the MAC-10, Military Armament Corporation, had the ambition to become the dominant player in the rapidly growing market for submachine guns used by the military and police. Despite the fact that the gun was popular with filmmakers, professional operators never really got the hang of using it. There were some true and agencies that did try out the MAC-10, but the vast majority of them immediately abandoned it as a result of certain very obvious performance flaws. The year 1976 marked the end of operations for the Military Armament Corporation. In spite of the fact that during the 1990s, the majority of its users were criminal organizations, such as street gangs and drug cartels, the MAC-10 continued to enjoy a legendary status in the culture of the United States. After some time had passed, the pistol was no longer visible on the screen. Gordon B. Ingram, an American gun designer, began development of the MAC-10, a blowback operated select fire weapon at a time that the decade of the 1960s was halfway through. Following a series of trials with different versions of the weapon's prototype, Ingram settled on the 10th iteration, which he designated the Model 10. The completed product is a rudimentary weapon that is boxy and about the size of a handgun. Depending on who you ask, the MAC-10 can be described either as a machine pistol or a submachine gun from a purely technical standpoint. When its wire stock is collapsible, the MAC-10 measures only 267 millimeters in length, making it a weapon that is effective in close quarters combat, despite its compact size. These characteristics may be especially appealing to those who work in special operations and law enforcement. The grip is positioned in the middle of the body of the gun so that it will be more balanced. The pistol was first made available in two different calibers, namely 45 ACP and 9 by 19 millimeters. The base of the grip can accommodate either a 30 round or a 32 round magazine, depending on the caliber of the firearm. Variations on later models are generally accepted. 380 and possibly even ammo for a rifle with a caliber of 22. Lastly, was the MAC-10 overrated? In the beginning, the top cocking handle of the upper receiver was what was employed to operate the open bolt system of the gun. Due to the open bolt nature of the weapon, it was not able to connect an optics rail to it, which resulted in the cocking handle appearing to be placed in an awkward location. Even if optics were available, a famous lead spray like the MAC-10 wouldn't benefit from them. Later, closed bolt models with side cocking handles were introduced to the market. The user is able to twist on a suppressor thanks to characteristic slots located at the base of the short barrel, which is located near the receiver. The MAC-10 conference also has some appealing features. Because of its uncomplicated but sturdy build, it had a high level of dependability and durability. Additionally, it has the ability to quickly throw a great deal of lead. The models with a 45 millimeter caliber and 9mm caliber each have a minimum cyclic rate of fire of 950 rounds per minute. On the other hand, the M16 and the AK-47 both cycle at a rate of approximately 800 rounds per minute. In addition to being dependable and having a rapid rate of fire, a firearm needs to be of some utility and ideally should be able to be modified. It is necessary that it works properly outside, preferably in a range of weather conditions. And there you have it, everything you needed to know about the Ingram Mac-10. What do you think about the gun? If you were a gangster, would you want one? Let us know down in the comments section. Also, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more similar content.